Okay guys, I'm back and now we're gonna talk about botanicals. Now I'm gonna show you guys a list of the things that I like to add to my soaps or even to olive oil or carrier oils to make an infusion. And here we go. I'm just gonna kinda pull everything out in order. I've got poppy seeds, carrot powder, got this from Lux Natch Lux Nature Supplies on Etsy. I have Alkanet Root, double, triple, million times bagged. Let's see. Hibiscus flowers, these are really nice for a tea. Calendula petals, these are from Brambleberry. Oh, I got a little, I got a blowout here. Silk, Tussa Silk from Soap Making Resource. Oh, this is beeswax, which has been um, like the remains, like when I filter it and stuff, and I really like to use this type of beeswax for perfumes because it has a really deep smell to it because it's just so concentrated. And I have caffeine powder, which I've only used uh, once in a really pretty soap that I made. Little lavender flowers, which we all know look ugly when they're put on top of cold process soap, but I still have some. I have some aloe vera powder when I can't get the real thing. It's kind of like a backup. TD, TSD Gwaur, Gwaur, Gwaur Gum, and this is from the soapdish.com. I think I bought this for something for my, for hair, and I do not, and I never used it. Bees, bee pollen, and I got this from Na uh, Lux Nature Supply again from Etsy. This is colloidal oatmeal from bescented.com. Cranberry seeds, which I haven't used, which would be so pretty on top of a soap. Dentric salts prevents caking of your bath salts from Camden Gray essential oils. I have never used this and I probably won't use it. I've never made bath salts. Well, I, actually, I know that's not true. I've made bath salts, but they never caked. I think I just might've used them right away. Anato seeds. These are from Salt Making Resource. Salt Making Resource has a lot of good additives and they have woad and I think they have woad powder, powder and India powder. I know they have indigo root powder. This is plantain herb powder from supplyemporium.com and I love this for summer soaps. Spirulina powder, Supply Emporium. So these are fun. I don't really use these in soaps. I have made things with them, like incense -y type things. So these are, I'll show you guys what these looks like. look like. <laughs> oh, for crying out loud, I can't even talk. Okay, these are dragon blood resins. And they are just, um, I don't know if I'm focusing here. I can't really smell them too much, but I have like all these smells here, so it's kind of hard to tell. So that's what they look like. This is frankincense. Tears. Hmm. See, obviously they're not like the essential oil, but I think they're cool. They're just little, little uh, resin balls. And then myrrh. 
are kind of the same as frankincense, but darker and more like, um, it's like a little piece of wood from the tree in there. So I think these are cool. A lot of this stuff, oops, making a mess. A lot of this stuff I just bought because I wanted it, you know, I wanted to know what like real frankincense and real myrrh type things came from. I don't remember even where I got this stuff from. I think it was probably a few different places. And then I just put it back. And then juniper berries, which I love juniper. It's really good for um, like getting rid of excess water. Like if I'm bloated or something. Which I would never be bloated, right? Because I'm perfect, but just kidding. Not perfect. We all know that. Anybody who knows me. Oh, these are so astringent or something. I just really like the smell of them. And I really like the looks of them. I need to get back to basics. When I first started making soap, I everything was like basic really just basic and I really love the look I remember my first the first time I fell in love with a bar of soap was from a company called mama's herbal soaps and this was like 10 years ago and I think they're from Oregon and her soaps to me like they weren't fancy but they looked so good they just had this beautiful natural aesthetic to them like you just wanted to pick them up and use them and I think for me like I have all this stuff but really what my goal is to do is to kind of get back to basics so hopefully I can do that love endures let's move on no more reminiscing here love endures um and it sure does, doesn't it? Organic wild rosebuds. And this is from her teas. And these was these was these was really there were there. This one doesn't have a lot of like great. Okay, so let me take that back. I've really picked through this, so but they're very pretty. I used them on my my um. What you call it? I used them on my rose soap, and there were so many good ones. And I think right now, the stuff that I have in here, they're organic. I think I'm gonna make like a. I think I'll probably make a tea, maybe, and then make a, a real rose soap. These are sun sunshine seeds. <laughs> These are sunshine seeds, you guys. These are chamomile seeds, and I can see that I got a little oil spilt on them. But these are really pretty too. Same place, Herties. H-E-R-T-E-A-S from Organic Nile Delta Chamomile. I love chamomile. I love, love chamomile. Okay. Black walnut powder and black walnut powder. So this is all black walnut powder. Haven't ever used this, would love to try it. And these are comfrey root. This is very healing for the skin. So that's it guys, this is it. I've got, I'll just kind of put them back backwards. <laughs> just kidding. I've got rose, chamomile, tussa silk, Colloidal oatmeal, cranberry seeds, beeswax, walnut powder, comfrey root, frankincense myrrh, dragon's blood, and juniper berries, dentric salts, which, uh, and TDS, TSD guar, guar, guar gum, I can't say it right, aloe vera powder, caffeine powder, Lavender seeds, 
not lavender seeds, lavender petals, calendula flower petals, hibiscus petals, bee pollen, um, carrot powder, carrot powder, spirulina, plantain powder. Oh my God. You know what? I am almost, I am ecstatic going through this stuff. Like you guys don't even know I needed to do this. Like I'm inspired. I'm inspired. I think I just did, um, I just did like the past few, the, so the past few videos that I've done have been um, scented soaps, which I had so much fun making, but I think what I'm going to concentrate on are small test batches, obviously, because I just don't sell that much. But anyways, um, so I think what I'm going to do is concentrate on making, using some of my natural stuff because I just love it. So fun oh my goodness you guys this has been a joy for me to do this really it has been so one of the things I won't be showing you and it's not because I don't want you to see it it's because it's a pain in the tushy buns is um my oils like I'll tell you what oils I have but you don't need to see those big buckets and same thing with butters like you don't really need to see all those butters either Okay, let's move on. Now we're going to talk about whatever's in this thing, which won't take long because there's really not that much in here and it's pretty full. So I have pumice powder, steric acid, ground apricot seeds, Dead sea salts, finely ground. Zinc oxide. This zinc oxide, I use this for my grandparents for making them like a desitin type um, balm. And I'm gonna tell you guys something. You, I should, I should make some for you because it really helps them. B. Okay, so BTSM basically. What is this stuff? Behentrimonium methyl sulfate, but really it's BTSM, BMTS. I can't remember what it's called, but it's um, lo lotions and stuff. I have not made lotions in like a long time. Citric acid also for lotions. So ins inspiration, right? I'm getting inspired to do more cool things here. But zinc oxide, you guys, this stuff is good for good for the babies and good for the elderly too. And good as a sunscreen. So that's it for this one. That was pretty quick. <laughs> quick and painless, right? And okay. Let's move on to the very last container, and this container is clays. And so clays are probably one of my favorite things to use to color soaps because not only can they just give you a nice natural color, but they can do so much good stuff for your skin. So first things first, I have got calcium bentonite clay. I have two different kinds of calcium bentonite clay I've got. I can't remember the name. One is calcium bentonite and one is, um, I can't remember, but I have them in jars, but I don't, I didn't bring the jars here. So I have a couple different jars of clay, which I have a lot of clay in. And the other one is a bentonite clay. It's, um, oh, I can't remember the name. Well, let's just move on. I have neem leaf powder. I've got some European clay powder, which is kind of like French green clay. This I need to order from Soap Making Resource. This is Woad Powder, and this gives a pretty blue, pretty blue, pretty blue color. So let's write that on our list. 
Woolwood powder. I don't even think I'm saying that right, but I don't care. This is, um, this should be in a different container because I've already spilled this like a whole bunch of times. This is a uh, Cambrian blue clay. It's very heavy. It's a real heavy clay. Of course, everyone's favorite activated charcoal, which we will not even open. I mean, you don't even have to but look at that stuff and it starts flying everywhere. Here's some more Cambrian blue clay. This stuff is so heavy. Oh my goodness. It's like dunk, dunk. It's heavy. It gives a really nice light, light, light blue color. White kale and clay, which I do need more of that. This is Rizul clay, and I should get more of this. I love using this in shampoos, and I love the color of it. It's nice and tea. I've got um, red Moroccan clay and Australian red reef clay, and so for me, like a fun combination to do is this kind of thing where you do the Rizul, the Moroccan, and the Red Reef because they're just like a really pretty, like, earthy palette. I have Dead Sea Clay. I need more of this. Gray, nice gray color. Great for your skin. I have Indigo Root Powder, which I need more of. And I have, this is the other bentonite clay. This is um, calcium and tan. I don't know. I got to look it up. I know there's two different kinds, and I know I have both of them. But I don't know what they are, so. Sorry, guys. Okay, so I'm going to put all this stuff back. And... That's it, guys. This has been everything. Um, this has been fun for me to do because I got to get a good look at what I've got. Nice little inventory list going, but not too much. I don't need too much. And then I think next I'm going to do essential oils, fragrance oils, I'm going to talk about my butters. I'm going to talk about my oils because you don't need to see all those buckets. And I think that's it. I think that's going to be good enough. And then you'll have a really good idea. So if you want to, you know, maybe you're inspired to do some stuff. I know I didn't really talk about like uses for this stuff, but I mean, there's a ton. There's a ton of uses for it. So my goal this year is to um, really use this stuff up or give it away by next year. Like I'm giving myself one year to go through this stuff, use it, and then don't find that I'm using it. I think what I'm going to do is give it away. I mean, so what do I use most in this stuff? I tend to use the first box that I showed you, the micas, and the last box that I showed you, the clays. So, I've got my micas. I'm sorry, I use the clays a lot, and I use the micas a lot. right here. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, awesome. If not, awesome. <laughs> Just kidding. I got to stop saying that. Okay, guys, that's it. Thanks for watching. Keep watching to see what I do with all this stuff. I know it's like this epic, epic adventure that we're on here and we'll see. It'll be, it should be fun, right? 